previously on the KP Watershed channel. So you're all kinds of fucked up. Yeah, I was a mess. Huge adjustment culturally with the letters on street signs and just little etiquette things. It's just such a total shock to your system to have to take all this in all at once, especially for the first time. And if you are a, you know, single white guy in this area of Shanghai, you will get approached. I'm seriously getting approached by people every three steps I take, and they would be relentless. They wouldn't leave me alone. You know, come on, come on. You, you got to see these girls. Just come and, you know, see one. If... And are you, and are you, so remind me, are you like walking to your hotel or are you just kind of like taking in the city and walking around like this, the ladder, what are you doing? Yeah, I'm, I'm close to the hotel. I didn't want to, you know, I didn't have cell phone service, you know, I didn't know the area was on my own, so I didn't want to stray far from the hotel, but it was just kind of, but you're in another country on the other side of the globe. Like you want to, you want to check it out. Yeah. Want to experience it, you know, see what there is to see. And ideally find some coffee too. So I'm doing a lap, you know, a few blocks around the hotel and the hotel is a very, very tall building. It's like a 75 uh, story skyscraper. So it's, you can't really miss it, right? It would be impossible to have lost my way from the hotel. When I left the hotel, I'd gone out and this is important. So, so I left the hotel only carrying my wallet with 420 RMBs or yuan, which is about 70 US dollars in the local China money. I had my debit card and then my company's Amex card and one personal Visa credit card, plus the, the video camera I had with me and my cell phone, which was turned off because I didn't have Wi-Fi, I didn't have uh, data, but just in case of an emergency, like you can make an emergency call even when you're roaming. Um, and I intentionally left things like my passport back at the hotel, um, you know, other credit cards that I have I didn't take with me, just because, you know, I, I had been somewhat prepared for the risks in downtown Shanghai and, you know, just wanted to set myself up to, you know, not be a prime target, right? Sure. So (laughs) before the trip, I had searched on TripAdvisor for like what are common tourist traps and tourist scams you can get caught up on, uh, where you should not use a credit card, where you should not eat or order ice cubes. And what was about to happen to me order ice cubes did you say yeah because they're made from the tap water so like you know the ice melts in your drink and it's like drinking the tap water which you're not supposed to do because it's you know very polluted um yeah there's so much stuff like that the pollution in there was really mind-blowing too but yeah so I, i had kind of heard of this scam which is part of why this is embarrassing. I shouldn't have fell for it after I had already heard of it. And at the time, I didn't know the name of the scam. I'll tell you guys the name later. I know it now. But basically, what they do is they invite you up to a private room, and you think you're just buying a, you know, a cup of tea for, for $3, but it turns out you're buying the tea and renting the room for $1,000. So I knew this was a common scam. Um but that was really all I knew about it. I didn't know too much more about the mechanics of how it actually works. So I'm walking around, I'm getting approached constantly by men and women, um, and they all you know, fell into those four categories that I mentioned earlier, right? They're older guys, older women who seem shady and seem like they've been around the block a few times. Um, and then- do you, see, do you see any other Westerners on the street? Who they're also coming up to? No, not at this point. Like, in this area of Shanghai, it's the most Western area. It's the French concession area, I think is what it's called. So during the day, you will see more Americans, uh, Brits, Germans, you know, just travelers from all over the world congregate in this area. However, you got to keep in mind, Mike, I was on a backwards uh, body clock. So I'm walking around. It's, you know, it's almost midnight at this point. So the streets were pretty right. empty, and no one who was there as a tourist ha- would intentionally go out at midnight in this, you know, what I was about to find out was not a very safe area to be walking around alone. So most of the people approaching me, again, they're, they're older, they look kind of sketchy, they're falling into those four categories, right? They're beggars, they're pimps, they're hookers. Then one girl comes up to me, and she's different from all the rest. So she's like our age, you know, mid to late 20s. She's dressed in a much more westernized way. Like, she's got a t-shirt, she's got jeans, Converse sneakers, 
Um, and her English was, was very fluent, much more so than the rest of the people who had approached me. And she says to me, you know, it's almost midnight. You know, wh why are you walking out here alone? Are you lost? And I say no, and I explain that, you know, I just got off a flight, so I'm not tired. Um, I'm walking around trying to find some coffee, do a little bit of exploring, check out Nanjing Road. So, you know, mm -hmm. thanks for thanks for checking on me, but, but I'm okay on my own. I'm doing fine. So she says something like, you know, I don't like walking alone, and I live here, and so just let me walk next to you. If I walk next to you, then no one else will bother you because you'll be with a girl, so, you know, they won't be trying to approach you to, you know, get your business, as it were. Um, and, you know, and she's like, and, you know, as we're talking, you know, maybe we'll become friends. You know, we'll talk and, you know, maybe meet, meet a new friend. Are you from, uh, are you from America or are you from England? Um, and so, like, at this point, you know, I had been saying no to everybody, but how could I really say no to that? It was, it made sense that having her walking with me would keep all the other solicitors away and that makes sense yeah and and you've also traveled this whole way by yourself right so i mean like it's just human nature that after a while you want to talk to somebody absolutely yeah like I, I was skeptical but definitely yeah after being totally alone traveling for yeah at this point you know around 24 some odd hours yeah you definitely just it's human nature to want to have somebody else to talk to that is a friend so we start walking together. Her name is Ling. Um, she didn't ask for anything. You know, we just walked down East Nanjing Road together. A lot of rhymes there. A lot of ings there. Maybe some song lyrics in there. Um, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so we walk back. We walk down the road. We walk back up the road. And we're just talking. You know, we talk about music that we like and the differences between USA music and, and China music. And the conversation about musicians then leads her to ask, okay, what kind of girls do you think are pretty? And I'm like, uh... And then she's like... That's a weird question. Yeah. I, I, like, this is the first time in what had, you know, been, you know, a 20-minute conversation that I'm kind of like, uh-oh, okay, here we go now. And so she points across the street, and she's like, see right over there? My friend owns that massage parlor. If you want, we can go over there. I'll get you a good deal on a massage. And I bet once we're there, you can find a girl who you think is pretty, and then we'll know what your type is. So I'm like, all right, so, uh, all right, figured it out. Yeah, she was just playing a longer, you know, it was a longer setup. That's a long con. Yeah. Yeah. So at this point, I'm like, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah. listen, it's getting late. I'm going to just head back to the hotel. I'm not interested. I don't want a massage. You know, that's not what I'm, that's not what I'm here for. It's not what I'm looking to do. So she's like, oh, no, no, I'm sorry. It's okay. You know, I've shown you where it is now. So if you change your mind, if you want to get a massage anytime while you're here, just come back, and this is a place I recommend. You can you can go back on your own. And she's like, you know, I thought you said that you weren't tired and you wanted to get some coffee, right? And it was true. I had said that. So she goes, want to just get a drink with me? You know, how about a beer? I'll, I'll, I'll get a beer, you get a beer. Or you can get your coffee, and, and I'll drink a beer. So again, you know, it's it would... I, I probably at that point should have walked away, but I say, okay, fine. At that point, it seems like, yeah, because then you don't know... Um. At, yeah, I mean, again, I'm doing this all in 2020 hindsight, and I wasn't in your situation, but it, 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 like you said, once she mentions the girls in the massage parlor, yeah, it seems like she maybe has ulterior motives. There are, yeah, so even there are, so even like the the coffee invitation, you know, yeah, there are some red flags now, but again, I'm overtired. I'm willing to look past them, just kind of I'm being overly optimistic here. Um, and I really kind of wanted a coffee. I wouldn't mind, you know, wouldn't, wouldn't mind a beer either at that point. So, you know, I, I'll take the drink. I'll take the company. You know, I don't know if I'd be able to find or order those things because, you know, most of the shops that are open only, only speak Chinese. So she walks me to a bar and this is really the big mistake of this story. This is where I screwed up. You know, whether it's Shanghai, especially in Shanghai, but really anywhere, you never let a stranger who you don't know lead you somewhere that you don't know is a safe place. And she led me to right. this bar. And, you know, again, in that moment, I, I was still a little dazed from the 15 hours of flying and the taxi ride. And it's just hadn't you know hadn't eaten really a good meal i had a little dinner but it's just you know i wasn't clearly i wasn't 
thinking completely rationally or or you know maybe i was just you know enjoying talking to her and figure you know we're in public what's the worst that can happen here in public like i, I knew about this private private room scam but i'll just make sure we don't go into a private room we'll stay in the bar proper with everybody else and you know if it gets sketchy i'll just leave again like we're three blocks away from my hotel and i can see it down the street so she leads me to this bar and it's tiny right the bar is really really small um there are a few booths those are all taken to all the seats are taken at the bar and in the booths so the hostess walks us up a flight of stairs to go you know to the upstairs part of the bar you would presume turns out it leads okay i have a question yeah. i have a question yeah. So you walk in, so there's other customers there who just look like normal customers, right? Who are all filled up. Yeah, I mean, it was they were all Chinese, but yeah. So Does Ling, that's her name, the girl you're with? Ling. Does she talk to the hostess? No. It didn't seem like she knew anyone there. Like she, It seemed like she knew of the bar, but it didn't seem like, you know, oh, hey, like, how's it going, Ling? Like, no, like we she could have been anybody to them or 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 even like an exchange like in english or is it mandarin they speak in shanghai it's the the there are all these different or is it cantonese no it's not cantonese mandarin is the more correct word i think that's becoming something of a dated term and there's there's a lot of nuance to the to the different writing styles and pronunciation styles we could have a whole separate podcast about uh the different but it's not like but it's not like the two of them exchange anything where it would even be like, how many do you want a table? Or is this the guy we're going to pull the scam over? It doesn't seem like that. And I was looking out for that, right? I was on the lookout for scams at this point. And no, it seemed like, you know, the staff of the bar, this hostess who was walking us up these stairs, seems to be treating us like we're just any two random customers that she's meeting for the first time. So we walk upstairs, and again, it leads us to a hallway. We walk down this hallway, and now I'm like, all right, like, thanks, but no thanks. Like, I, I see where this is going. Listen, I don't want a private room. I'd rather just wait downstairs. Eventually, a seat will open up at the bar. You know, let's just go back downstairs and just wait or, or find somewhere else. So the girl and the hostess are like, oh, what? Why? Like, just just check out the room. You might like it. I'm like, I'm because are 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 you in your mind like thinking of this specific scam yes. that you had read about? At this point, yes. Okay. So and and I told them that, like I said to them, to Ling and to the hostess, I'm very sorry if this is an insulting thing to say to you in your bar, but you know, before I came here on the internet, I've read about these bars in Shanghai that have these private rooms, and you know, I don't want a private room. I don't need a private room. Um, and I don't want to go in there and, you know, order a $5 beer and then find out that it's, you know, $5,000 for the room. So Ling, you know, the hostess only spoke Chinese. So Ling translates what I said to the hostess. The hostess speaks back to her in Chinese. And Ling says, she says, don't worry. There is no charge for the room. The room is free. It'll just be the drinks that we get. And this is our karaoke room, too. And it is. I see there's a karaoke machine in there. And, you know, again, we've been talking about music. She, she's a singer. So she's like, listen, we'll just, you know, we'll have a drink up there, you know, I'll sing a song and then we'll check back downstairs to see if any seats have opened up downstairs. So that's the plan. Go into this karaoke room, have a, have a quick drink, do some karaoke and then head back downstairs. Next time on the KP Watershed channel. I like to keep the YouTube episodes to ideally under 10 yeah. minutes. I don't know if that's going to happen for this one, but so, I'm kind of intrigued too. You know, like I do kind of want to see like, okay, what are they going to do here? And so Ling is already up in the front of the room, setting up her karaoke and starting to sing. And now I'm like, listen, I have to work tomorrow. I did have to work Sunday morning, so I can't start drinking whiskey at 1 a.m. On the other hand, again, I, I was having a good time. <laughs> On the other hand... And, like, the drinks are already there, right? You can't send them back. So I'm like, all right, we'll drink these together, and then 